Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about membranes and phospholipids. So we're going to start by talking about phospholipids, which are the molecules that compose uh, the lipid bilayer. And so actually there are other molecules in our cell membranes, but the phospholipids are the most common type of lipid. So here you can see our kind of most familiar depiction of the phospholipid on the far right, where we have a head group and some tail groups, or two tail groups to be exact. So this is characteristic of a phospholipid. There are other lipids that have a different structure, perhaps more tails coming off of here. So you have three tails instead of two. You can have uh, one tail. And in some organisms, you can actually have um, a lipid that has a head, uh, two tails, and then connected to the other end of the tails is another head. But we won't go into that right now. This type of phospholipid is common in animal or in mammal cell membranes, particularly mammalian, and it is called an amphipathic molecule. And that's the word that's up here. A little bit hard to pronounce, amphipathic. It, that word describes the chemical characteristics of this molecule, which is that it has a polar region which is the head region, and a nonpolar region, which is the tail region. So this molecule has the ability to interact with water and also to interact with nonpolar molecules. So again, the head group is hydrophilic because it is charged, and the tail groups are not charged. They are nonpolar and hydrophobic. And this is really important for forming the structure of the membrane where we have two phospholipids um, in what we call two leaves and the phospholipids are kind of opposite of one another and we'll see a depiction of that in a couple of minutes. I want to point out the key chemical groups in this phospholipid, the choline up here, the phosphate group, which is charged, as we have seen in many other molecules in the past, and then the glycerol. And then we also see these hydrocarbon tails. So these are the nonpolar regions of the molecule. And the hydrocarbons are literally just made up of carbons and hydrogens. And we see that here, there are long chains of them. They could be of various lengths. Sometimes they can have only single bonds between the carbons. And at other, in other molecules, we'll see that there are double bonds between some of the carbons. And we'll talk about that in a moment as well. So I do want to point out this region right here. Um, which again is the head group of the phospholipid. And then I also want to point out the part of the uh, fatty acid, that is the tail that has the um, carboxyl group. And so fatty acids are hydrocarbon chains plus a hydroxyl group. So sometimes we use some of this terminology incorrectly and say that uh, this whole thing is a fatty acid. This is a phospholipid, and the fatty acids are the tail groups. Likewise, fatty acids are not just uh, hydrocarbon chains. They also have to have that carboxyl group. All right. There are different types of phospholipids, and phosphatidylcholine, again, phosphatidylcholine, is the most common type of phospholipid in the cell membrane. And I just want to point out that there are different types of fatty acids in our phospholipids. And that determines what the, or that is in part determining what the identity of the phospholipid is. So different phospholipids might have different hydrocarbon chain lengths and they might differ in the number of double bonds in the hydrocarbon chain. Now let's talk a little bit more about that. And we said that fatty acids are hydrocarbon chains with 
these uh, carboxyl groups. And <clears throat> there are different types of fatty acids um, or fats in general. And so the fats are just the hydrocarbon chain part of the molecule. Saturated fats are saturated in hydrogens. So this hydrocarbon chain on the left here would be considered to be saturated because it has as many um, hydrogens as possible. Unsaturated fats are not saturated in hydrogens because they have double bonds. So this hydrocarbon chain on the right has a double bond, which means that it has fewer hydrogens than it would have overall if it had a single bond here. Because the way that this works out, if you focus in and think about the number of bonds that carbon can form, it is forming one bond with the other carbon above it, one bond with the hydrogen here, and then it's uh, forming two bonds with the carbon below it. So that adds up to four, which is what we normally see almost always with carbons. However, if we look on the hydrocarbon chain on the left to compare, then this carbon also has four bonds, but it is bound to two hydrogen groups. So two bonds to hydrogen group, hydrogens, and then two bonds uh, to carbons, one above and one below. And so again, that's why we say that this one on the right is unsaturated. It's unsaturated in terms of hydrogens. And I just um, put a little depiction of different types of fats up here. So I'm sure that you, you're familiar with um, the uh, kind of debate uh, between what is a healthier fat, saturated or unsaturated. And really, it just refers to whether or not there are uh, double bonds in the hydrocarbon chains, uh, which actually does cause a significant difference in the breakdown of these fats um, in terms of met metabolic pathways that are required. But we won't get into that. That's uh, something that you can learn about in biochemistry. Uh, uh. Our last video for this segment, or sorry, this will probably be our last slide for this segment. Uh, which shows the formation of a phospholipid bilayer. So lipids can spontaneously form into membranes because, as we said a couple of slides ago, those head groups are hydrophilic. They like to interact with water because they are charged, and the tail groups are nonpolar, so they do not interact well with water. So the, as we saw with the different amino acid um, functional groups, Nonpolar functional groups tend to interact with other nonpolar functional groups. In this case, we see that the nonpolar tails interact with other nonpolar tail groups. And non so overall, nonpolar molecules tend to interact with other nonpolar molecules. So we can spontaneously get the formation of these two layers of the phospholipid um, because it is um, energetically favorable because you have fewer hydrophobic molecules interacting with water and more hydrophilic molecules interacting with water rather than hydrophobic molecules. And the, this formation or this structure rather creates um, a kind of barrier to water and other molecules because uh, as you see in this um, depiction here, space filling model here, the bilayer has the head groups on the outside, on the bottom here, and on the top. And then, <clears throat> although these head groups are interacting with water, it's really difficult for water molecules to pass through the membrane because they would have to pass through this hydrophobic area here. So we don't see any molecules in the hydrophobic, any water molecules in the hydrophobic um, inside of the membrane. We see lots of them on the two sides of the membrane. Now, water can pass through the membrane, um, but it's at a relatively slow rate and it's energetically unfavorable. So we're going to talk uh, in a little bit about how water does get through the membrane, because as we know, 
cells are filled with water. So they do need to bring water into the, mem uh, into the cell and also sometimes export it from the cell.